Ah yes, hello dears, this is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective and it is a pleasure and an honour to, for some of you, or to once again connect and for others of you to connect for the very first time. So it's been an interesting ride for us as we've been observing for the last several days as there is a wide variety of beings who are observing, who are interacting and just um, communicating with all of you. So we learn so much from you and we want to acknowledge that. We want to express our gratitude and our appreciation for the opportunity to learn. Because so often you all think that you are at the bottom of the totem pole. That you have very little knowledge, that you have very little wisdom and nothing to teach the rest of us. But you could not be any farther from the truth because you really are masters down here on the planet. You are masters or are in the process of becoming masters of integration. And you will once again start teaching the rest of us how to integrate. If you can integrate in the density of the third dimension, then you can integrate throughout any dimension. And that's what you're going to be helping the rest of us who have been having challenges. We learn so much, so thank you. What we wanted to talk to you about today is the illusion of time. Time is simply a marker for an event. It is a record locator, and if you want to think of it as the Dewey Decimal System of sorts for your experiences, then you can. Within the third dimension, it is the only dimension in which you experience linear time. It is one of the constructs of the game, and it is a very unique perspective, one that that we don't have in any of the other dimensions. Part of the game was that you see yourself as separate, that you see yourself as disconnected, that you go down to a planet that's very dense with a wider range of motions, and then you can't see any of the other probable realities that are going alongside you. And you have to find and feel your way through without knowing what's coming over the next hill. And it makes for a very exciting ride. Now, when you're in the midst of it, you all think, well, this isn't any fun. This doesn't feel very good. But as soon as you expand your awareness again, you say, that was a great ride. I want to go back. Let's go. So we acknowledge your courage. We honor and, uh, and we are very grateful, as we said, to have the opportunity to share the experience with you. Now... As you are going through this process of ascension, and what is ascension? It simply is increasing your frequency. So as you go through this process of increasing your frequency, what you will eventually do is to cross a dimensional barrier. And there really isn't a barrier in the way that you think of it. It's not a wall. There, there literally is a membrane, all right? But you move into a new frequency range. You move into a new dimension. And once you cross, you change the game. Now, when you get up to the fourth dimensional level and above, it is a multi-dimensional game. You have the ability to see probable timelines that are going on right beside you. All right? There are infinite ways that you can experience a reality. In linear form, you are focused intently on one string, if you will, if you want to think of it that way. You can also think of it as focusing your energy on a singular point. If you want to see it as a spotlight, your energy being focused like a sharp spotlight onto the singular point. Now, when you get lost thinking about the past or you get lost thinking about the future, what happens is this spotlight becomes diffused and your energy is no longer sharp, but rather it's being, it's being pulled off onto another point. It's no longer focused. And that's your energy. That light is your soul's essence. So when you're not in the now, when you're not present, you are not fully energized. You're not fully engaged. So in the higher realms, how you experience this how you experience reality is to stand in one point and be able to look down multiple timelines to see what the potentials feel like. We would describe it as being akin to 
someone who is fast forwarding through a movie. You get the experience, you get the idea of what's coming, but you don't really feel it. And that's what it's like to project forward to kind of peek at some of these other probable realities and other probable timelines. And then you get to decide which one feels really good and then project yourself forward and have that experience to shift your focus onto that point, if you will. We'd like everyone to take a nice deep breath. Are you all with us so far? Yes. Yes. So as we go, we're going to talk a bit in circles, all right, and we do this with intent. Because what it does is it focuses you in a very different way. You're not able to hold on to that linear timeline, all right? You're having to work multidimensionally and spread out in multiple directions in order to follow us. So if you feel that somehow we've lost you, that you're not getting it, don't worry. You're getting everything you need today. We are depositing energetic packets of information into your field, along with your own guides, by the way, because each of you has at least three beings with you right now. At least. Some of you have got a whole posse. <laughs> so, uh, especially in this energy, because you've got a lot of beings who are watching your back, helping you. There's, uh, there's a lot going on. So, we're giving you everything that you need. Now, some of you, this may be the first time that you have exposure to this kind of information. And uh, don't worry. If you feel like it's over your head, it will come up again. And you'll say, ah, I've heard that before. I don't know where, but I know I've heard it. And that's all that's required today. So, so no worries. You're getting everything you need. Now, some of, his, of you are also asking us questions that may not get answered, at least not verbally. We are also depositing answers to those questions in your energetic fields. We're a full service channel. <laughs> We've got to talk about the nature of reality a bit before we can really get into time, because you have to understand how it, it operates. So your version of the now, the experience that you're having in this moment is all that there is. The past, the future, it's all concurrent. It's all going on They're right at this same now moment. You are constantly moving back and forth between these now moments. If you put them all together, it looks like a string. All right, so you can think of it as a string. We also call it the harp of probability because each string has its own unique vibration, just as each string on the harp has its own unique frequency. And based on where you are vibrating, you are putting yourself on a different string of reality or a different point of reality. Now, each point has an agreed upon set of circumstances that you say are your past because you're in linear reality. You've got to build it that way. So you've got your own personal level and you've got your own collective level. As you alter your frequency, what will happen if you alter it dramatically, you are going to put yourself onto another timeline. Those of you who have ever had the experience of deja vu have put yourself on another timeline. That's what that experience is. Yes, you've repeated a part of it and you're feeling it all over again. Now, most of the shifts you make between these timelines are rather subtle. Most of you aren't making huge shifts in your belief systems, which are altering your patterning, which are then putting you elsewhere. Most of it is pretty subtle. That's why you, you're not finding yourself on a version of Earth where World War II didn't occur. All right? Or well, you're, you're finding yourself in a future version where there are... Um, flying cars, all right, because your reality, the vibration is similar. It's not dramatically different. Now, as you go here, as you go through and increasing your frequency, your experience of time is very, very different. Frequencies don't move through time at the same rate. So, Let's just talk about your cells, for instance. If you've got a cell in your body that is vibrating at a lower rate, it doesn't experience time or move through time at the same rate as those that are vibrating at a higher frequency. How you perceive that is that those cells are damaged and degenerating 
But in reality, those cells are regenerating, just not as quickly as the other cells around it. Does that make sense? Do you all understand what, we say, what we're saying here? So, if you can shift your perception of reality just a bit to see that your body is always in a constant state of repair and that it's just moving through time at a different rate, that will help you to have a very healthy body because you're going to see yourself as constantly regenerating as opposed to broken and something needs to be fixed because what you're pulsing out is what you get back. And it's just sending out those signals that I'm constantly in a state of regeneration. The cells respond and say, all right, we're constantly in a state of regeneration. Let's go. So a lot of the shifts that you're making right now are subtle. Right? The timelines that you're moving through and changing to are subtle. As you increase in frequency, you are experience, experiencing accelerated time. So if you think back 20 years ago and what the pace of life was like, it was much, much slower. You all don't really notice it because you just say, oh, that's life. Life is hectic. Life is busy. Your 24-hour day feels more like it's about 12 hours right now. Next year, it's going to feel more like it's about eight. Now, already we see some of you squirming in your seats. There's not enough time for me to get things done now. How am I going to do it next year? The stress starts. No worries. Because all you have to do is to understand that it's simply a marker, that you can project yourself anywhere you want to be. You align yourself with that time, with that marker, with that point, with that experience. So if you want to think about it this way, you need to be at the office at 9.30. Right now it's 9.15 and you're 45 minutes away. At least how you normally perceive it for you to drive. As you start to pulse vibrationally that you are there, that you are present and aligned with that version of reality where you're walking in the door at 9.30, you start to bend time. You start to align yourself and project yourself with that moment. Everybody take a deep breath. simple really and you're rewiring your brain with how you think time exists so for some of you this is going to feel like a stretch it's going to feel a bit of a mind bender all right and as you're trying to digest these ideas that we're giving you and the, the wheel is just going around and around we want you to see it as an orb of light and we want you to drop this orb of light down into the heart center because the heart center can process all of that information that the mind can't. Remember, the mind is set up as a filter for the third dimension. The paradigm of the third dimension is that there's only one timeline. So what the brain does is it throws out all that extraneous data. You can't process it. When you drop the energy down and start experiencing it, processing it through the heart center, the heart has no filters. It is the multi-dimensional filter. And it just sits in the heart and you say, oh yes, that's how time exists. I remember this. The rest is just an illusion. Now, as you're experiencing this accelerated time, it is a benefit to you. Because already, as we said, some of you are feeling a bit anxious, but what it will force you to do is alter your perception of time until you can step out of it. And this notion that we were just talking about, about projecting yourself to a point, is where you're all going to get. Because this is what you do on the other side. So you're getting the practice now. And you can put it into your daily regimen about what you want to do and where you want to project yourself and at what point you want to project yourself there. This is how time jumping works. There are many beings who are very proficient at time jumping. Some of them are masters at it and that's all they do. They go and they observe different timelines. They simply project their energy to a different point. Now, time here, you see it as a spiral in the third dimension. It goes up and up and up as it increases in frequency. Now, when you get into the higher dimensions, it takes on different geometric form. There's still markers, but because we're moving and, and rearranging our reality in different ways, there are different 
sacred geometrical forms which are overlaid over that illusion. All right, you can think about it as the library being organized in a different way. So the books, the records are shelved in a different manner. But as a divine being, you have the ability to find that record. You have the ability to automatically locate it based on its frequency and align yourself with that time. So one of the other exercises we'll give you here to adjust time is to envision two clocks in your mind's eye. The first clock is the local time where you are. The second is your own personal clock. So if you want to experience something at an accelerated rate, so in other words, you want to get someplace faster, so you want to adjust your clock back. All right, give yourself extra time. If you are ready to go some, uh, go, go and leave, uh, Hopefully you're not wanting to set your uh, clocks forward during this lecture, but if you're done and you want to leave, you're bored, you're going to set your own clock forward to get something to move faster. All right, are you all with us there? What we would say is just to make sure that you reset your clocks when you're done, because otherwise you're going to feel out of sorts. You're going to feel out of, of step, out of frequency, out of rhythm with these, uh, with these clocks, with your sense of time. Uh, not being in sync. All right. So we'll go ahead at this point. There's more we want to talk about. But we'll go ahead and ask if you have any questions about time. None? All right. Just one second. The question was, can you move through time through a dream? Well, yes, because... When you're in the dream state, when can you move through time through a dream? Uh, when you're in a dream state, there is no time. Uh, you also have the ability uh, to heal now in a meditative state, to heal the past, to shift the past. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. We'll give you the example here as healing. But yes, in a dream, you, you are stepping outside of time altogether. Now, in the meditative state, if you have an issue, say, from your childhood, and this can also be from a past life, it doesn't matter, you can envision it. And your ability to imagine and to visualize is quite potent because your imagination is your connection to source as processed through the filter of the mind. So you are connecting with source and, in a sense, rewriting your version of history. So as you visualize events taking place in a different way, say you were bullied as a child, and you've been carrying that hurt, you haven't been able to integrate it because you've been beating yourself up for not standing up for yourself and you haven't been able to let it go. So in your imagination, you take yourself back to that point, to that moment in time, you find it, and you re-experience it in a new way. You see it and more importantly, you feel it playing out in a different way. You see yourself simply expressing what you felt. You were standing up and verbalizing that it wasn't all right for you to be a victim, that you're not a victim. All right? And it shifts the energy around it. When you shift the energy around it, you shift timelines. Because on that timeline that you were just on that point, it had a different vibrational signature. When you see it, feel it, experience it playing out in a new way, you've changed your set of circumstances that created your past. The agreed upon set of circumstances that were your past. When you change the agreed upon set of circumstances that are your past, you put yourself on another timeline again. All right? This is also another way for you all to heal. Because as you shift that state vibrationally, in that other timeline, in that other moment, you shift it in this vehicle because you're holographic. So it doesn't matter whether it's a past experience or another lifetime. As you go through the process of integration, no matter where it is, that information shows up in your energetic field. If you decide to integrate it into your own field, in other words, if you allow that program to run within your own field, all right, I'm letting go of all of that. I'm letting go of that fear that I can't stand up for myself. I'm going to run that through this vehicle I have here. 
You can think of it like antiviral software programming. All right, once you run the program, it's going to take care of it anywhere that it resides in your field, whether it's a past life, a future life, or your childhood. And once you do that, you change your overall vibrational state and you put yourself on another timeline. Take a deep breath. Mrs. Pete. Yes. It would be likely, I guess, that we might have to do that more than once. Not necessarily. Uh, it just depends on, on what the issue is and how long you've been dragging it around and how traumatic, uh, how, how traumatic the event was. Sometimes you will take things in stages because you're afraid of feeling too much. So you will take only as much as you're ready to deal with. So that's why oftentimes you find that you are kind of experiencing it in layers like an onion. You think, well, aren't I done yet? Here we are again, because you've taken it in steps, because otherwise it would have been too much. Yes? Yes. yes. Um, they say that, you know, we've seen what the imagination has done to us. Now we can see what the imagination can do for us. And I'm just wondering, with this envisioning in this type of way into the, prob the, the potential of the future, how do we image uh, with no sense of... Um, you know, what type of details do we, can we impart upon redeeming our imagination in such a way so that it can be utilized for our, our possible future? So how do you imagine the future? Yes, <laughs> um, it, and, and this is the tricky part for all of you because uh, you haven't used your imaginations for a very long time. You've been running on autopilot. You've been, you've been following along with the masses of what you're told to do. So you're not used to thinking outside the box. So when you have every potential available to you, you say, where do I start? It feels overwhelming. So start in one small corner of your life, if you will. And start playing around. Allow yourself to dream and fantasize. Now, when you connect with source energy, that's when you get inspiration. That's when you start to think outside the box. Well, what if I did this? You know, I hadn't really thought of, about, you know, structuring... Um, structuring my life this way, or I hadn't thought about that job, or I hadn't thought about um, designing jewelry, or I hadn't thought about, um, you know, making pottery. It wasn't anything that even entered into my imagination. So one of the things we suggest is that you make sure that you're connected with Source. How do you connect with Source? Find an image of something that puts a smile on your face, and what we recommend is an animal or a place. If you think about people, there may be programs running at the subconscious level that you're not aware of. And sometimes that can happen with animals that you know as well, or places. So just be aware of how you're feeling. You all can find that image right now. All right, we encourage you to do so. And as you think about it, take note of how you feel in your body. This is the simplest exercise we can give you, but it is the most potent exercise we can give you. How do you feel? Are you lighthearted, warm, tingly, expanded, uplifted, joyful? Any of those things? If you're feeling that, then you've expanded your field and you're connected. If you're not quite there, keep playing with it. Play around with the different images. See a puppy. Imagine that puppy breath. All right, if you're an animal lover. You might want to see a butterfly. The butterflies landed on the bush just for you to observe it, to see its delicate, delicate legs and wings and antennae. It's there just to, to bring beauty and joy to your perception and awareness in that moment. But just keep playing around with it until you start to feel lighter and lighter and lighter. Now what happens when you are connected is that your field expands to about six feet wide when you're fully open. When you're in this space, you can connect to the Akashic realm, you can, you can connect to your guides, to your higher consciousness, to source, to limitlessness. You can think outside the box. When you are in intense fear, this shrinks down to about an inch wide, this column. So there's not a lot of information that can run through this reduced column. So anytime you're feeling fatigued, stressed, or fearful, you want to put yourself back into this state. It doesn't take long for you to alter your vibrational field. 
So just start playing around in one small area. And when you start to do that, and you're feeling really good about what it is you're imagining, and that's the key to manifestation, is thoughts create form, but your emotional states drive it into being. So it's, it's, it's about where you're vibrating. The emotions are like the gas that get you there. So as you're having these thoughts about what it is you'd like to see the future as, how are you feeling? Are you feeling anxious because you, you don't know if it can come true? You don't know what 2012 holds. Or are you excited about the potential? Now, we encourage you to start fantasizing what happens after 2012. You're building a brand new world and it can be shaped any way that you want it to be. So how do you imagine it? How would you like to see your life shaped? You are the creator and generator of that version of reality. So we suggest that you dream and dream bigger and bigger because your dreams are all way too small right now not even big enough now you can also play around with time and project yourself forward to see what it might look like but remember this is only a version of reality there are infinite versions And they can all look very, very different. What you're aligning yourself with is you're projecting yourself forward to examine the future is the vibration that you're holding in the now. Really what will happen is that when most of you are looking at probable realities and probable futures, you're looking forward from the one that you're standing on. All right, so you're not necessarily seeing the ones that may be vibrating right beside you. And this is why a lot of predictions don't come true because you flip to a new timeline and the future is different from there. All right, we've got time for maybe one more question. question? Yes. Uh, How do you know when you've raised your vibrational field and does that change all the time? Like you raise it and then does it stay like that or does it keep going back and forth, low, high, low, high? How do you know when you've changed a field? How are you feeling? Are you feeling good? then you know you're vibrating in a, in a higher rate. All right, it's really as simple as that. Are you holding joy? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling resentful, angry, tired, fatigued? For any of those things, then you're vibrating at a lower rate. Your field is constantly in flux. And what will happen as you go through this ascension process is that you will increase your vibration. And as you increase your vibration, you're triggering all your lower stuff. That gets projected you experience it and you drop out of that higher frequency because you've got to clear your field and as you're holding the higher vibration you can't maintain it until you clear that lower stuff so you're constantly dropping out what will happen is you will drop the first time you'll drop pretty far and then you'll go back up and you'll hold the higher rate for a little bit longer and then you'll drop out again and probably not as far and then you'll go back up and you'll hold the higher rate even longer until eventually the drops are fewer between and you're holding the higher frequency for longer and longer amounts of time. That is normal. That is part of the process. So I guess the question is how do you raise your vibrational field just by doing things that make you feel good? In part, by focusing. Remember what you're projecting is what you're going to get back. But this will be part of the process because you're projecting high vibrational stuff. You get high vibrational stuff for a while and then you start experiencing the lower stuff so that you can see that you've got those operating systems going. When you're in the midst of the lower stuff, you've got to look at it and see how and why you've created it. That will allow you integration. And that's how you increase your frequency is by integrating the lower stuff. Integration is simply letting go of judgment to see that you created the situation. You're not a victim. Victim is the mind. It's third dimensional level of consciousness. It's an illusion. You were always in the driver's seat and you always created it. So when you see how and why you created it and how it was of service to you, you drop the charge. And that's when you start to go higher and higher in frequency. All right. So have fun playing around with time. It's incredibly malleable. It's not a constant. And we want to shatter that perception in your reality. Because when you understand that it's completely malleable, 
you all can start breathing a bit easier. You're not as stressed out. You're not thinking, how in the world am I going to get through my day? Now, we will say one other thing about the experience of time. If you take time to ground in your body, and the exercise that Wendy had you walking through will, can help you to do that, there are others that you can do, uh, and really it's all about visualization and seeing yourself incorporating into your body. You are able to be present. When you're present, you can make adjustments in frequency much, much faster because you can decide whether you like it or you don't like what you are experiencing. Otherwise, you'll go through three days and say, you know, I really didn't like where I was at before you realized that's where you were to start with because you weren't engaged with the vehicle. So if you can ground into your body and if you can be present, what will happen is that you'll be in the flow. So things that would normally take you eight hours to get through because you're in the flow, it's only going to take you five. All right? So you can have a different experience of time as opposed to meeting resistance. Remember, resistance, lower frequencies, you're going to experience time in a different way. Everybody take a deep breath here. It's a lot for your mind. It, it bends your perception of reality. But you're not going to step all the way out of time until you're ready to leave this dimension. Until you're done playing. At least not on a permanent basis. You may have moments where you will step out altogether. But when you get to the fifth dimensional level, you simply project wherever you want. All right? So we hope we have given you a few ideas and new things to think about. Really, we would, we would encourage you all, and we can't stress this enough, to dream bigger. All of your guides are, uh, are very excited at this thought. So uh, they really want to encourage you to do so. Because if you think you've, you've been dreaming big, it's not nearly enough. Play around, have fun. Your only responsibility, your purpose, all of you, this go around, is to experience joy. So if you're not having joy, why not? There's a place to start. And if you're having trouble thinking of what would be fun, think back to your childhood. What did you like to do and explore when you were young? And you can begin there. So for today, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But know that we're around. You can call on us at any time. Uh, you don't need an intermediary. You don't need Wendy to channel for you. All you have to do is get yourself heart-centered, set your intent to connect with us. Ask for assistance because you've got free will. And if you're not asking, we can only give you so much. But when you ask, then we can give you everything that we can. And listen. Trust what you get. It is going to feel like your imagination when you first begin. If there's any doubt, ask for confirmation. And we will be happy to, to put confirmation in your path until you get it or you no longer want it. So until then, dear ones, we will be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes. <laughs>